Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Today I'm talking about the new Guillermo del Toro film, Nightmare Alley. Um, this is a film that came out back in December of 2021. Um, I didn't get around to seeing it when it was in theaters. Uh, it came out the same weekend as Spider-Man No Way Home in my area, so obviously that right in and of itself would kind of prevent me from seeing this in a more timely manner. Uh, other films came out, so um, it wasn't until just recently where... Um, HBO Max offered it as a streaming option, so that was kind of the one way of how I finally got around to seeing this movie. Um, you know, I heard good things about it. I heard some people say it wasn't Guillermo del Toro's best, so there are some other reasons as to why it, it took me as long as it did to getting around to seeing it. Um, you know, I, I already posted my best of 2021 video, and so this was kind of one of the films that I unfortunately didn't get around to seeing to, seeing if it factored in and things like that, but... Um, here I am. I am going to review Nightmare Alley for you today. This is actually a remake of a film that came out in the 1940s. So I think it's one of the first times in a long time where Guillermo del Toro has done that, where it's not something original. It's not something from like a book of his that he grew up as a kid or something. Uh, this is a remake of an older film that was also based off the same book called Nightmare Alley. Um, so who knows, maybe he really enjoyed the book as a kid or something like that too, but in this film, you guys, uh, we follow a character played by Bradley Cooper. Um, he joins a carnival of, of workers at this carnival that kind of travels the area and um, entertains people from all over the world. And um, he basically learns the trade. He learns how to uh, take care of, you know, the freak show attraction people. He knows how to, um, he learns a skill called mentalism, which is basically a skill where uh, you take what somebody is wearing or what they're doing or how they behave in crowds and stuff. And you just kind of play off of that and you kind of figure out what their what potentially what their siblings name could be or what their dad's name could be and things like that so there's certain things from this guy that he learns from the carnival about uh, how to perform mentalism and things uh, but for the most part he's mostly taken under the wing by a character played by Willem Dafoe and Willem Dafoe is kind of in charge of the freak show attractions he kind of recruits people that have something odd about them that could make up for an interesting freak show attraction for when he uh, has a new one of those going around at the circus and at the carnivals. And so basically Bradley Cooper has a whole bunch of people that he's learning about the carnival from. He falls in love with a woman played by Re Rooney Myra, and she's kind of this um, staged attraction where uh, it looks like she's getting electrocuted to death, but she isn't. And so there's all these people that he learns and uh, gets to know in this carnival that travels around the country and things like that. But the film kind of takes a turn when him and Rudy Myra decide to kind of go off on their own, get away from the carnival, and perform their own show. And um, it's Bradley Cooper kind of pursuing that mentalism skill that he learned while he was in the carnival. And so things kind of go well for a little while. There's about two years in where things start to go well. But then they eventually meet up with a character played by Kate Blanchett that kind of tests Bradley Cooper's mentalism and kind of turns the mentalism show into something that it isn't. It turns Bradley Cooper's character into something that he isn't. And it kind of tests his ability to perform the show correctly. And things get brought up and people get attracted to the ability and thinks he can do more than what he can really do. And so all these things happen that send Bradley Cooper's character down this dark path that ultimately make him question if learning mentalism was really the good thing or not. There was even at one point of the, where his mentor who taught him this uh, warned him that if used in the wrong way, it could be a very dangerous tool that could really harm your life if used in the wrong way. So over the course of this film, we kind of had to ask ourselves as the viewer and Bradley Cooper as a character, if learning mentalism was really the right way to go, if he should have just stayed in the carnival and just kind of pursued it there and be safe amongst his mentors, or if going down this path was the right way, but to kind of not take Kate Blanchett's um, criticisms too hard and send him down the path that he, I'm sure, didn't intend to go down. And so this happens over the course of Nightmare Alley. But overall, guys, I thought this film was okay. There's things about this film that I absolutely love. It's it's clearly a Guillermo del Toro movie. Um, there's definitely scenes where you can sense his presence and sense his skill because I really like The Shape of Water. I really liked um, Pacific Rim, and I liked um, you know Pan's Labyrinth and some other big films that he's worked on over the years. He's definitely one of those directors where he puts just as much time and money into his visuals as he does into his story. Uh, but Nightmare Alley is one of those weird things where there's parts of me that wonder what exactly compelled him to tell this story in particular. Like I said, I don't know if he was a huge fan of the book. 
I don't know if he was a huge fan of that 1940s movie that this is a remake of. Um, I don't know if there was just something about the story itself that just really compelled him to kind of tell his own version of the story. Um, who really knows? But I'm going to go over some positives and negatives of the things I really liked about the film and some things about the film that are negatives that I think will prevent this film from being a huge Guillermo del Toro classic like some of his other films became. For my positives and negatives of this movie, though, for the positives, I thought the production of design of this movie was absolutely great. Um, I loved how the production design really did feel like you're in kind of this rundown carnival or in the mentalism parts that he really found these big grand stages to perform on with his, you know, girlfriend slash wife or whatever Rooney Myra was trying to be. Um, there's just a lot of scenes where you can definitely tell he put a lot of time and money into uh, making the city shows that he does with the mentalism big and grandiose and when he's at the carnival really make those feel like it's run down and dirty and has freak show attractions and has people that can bite your hand at any second and scam you out of your money uh, it's just one of those productions where you can just tell that the right imaginative forces were behind it to really kind of make it stand out on the screen and i think the first half and this kind of leads into my next positive point i think the first half of this movie is very strong i think the whole learning the mentalism thing learning about the carnival learning about how the freak show attraction people get found and stuff um, it has a very strong first half where you're learning about everybody and learning about their craft and their skill and how Bradley Cooper is going to make that his own over the course of this film. So, uh, like I said, that is my second big positive point with this movie is the first half of the story I thought was very strong. You really feel very convinced and compelled as to what can lead Bradley Cooper down the path that he does. Um, overall, there really is some great performances here. Bradley Cooper himself is very good in this movie. Rooney Myra, for the most part, is pretty good in this movie. And I thought Willem Dafoe was very convincing as this guy that kind of takes the flaws of people and kind of tries to find ways to put it into his carnival, put it into the circus and things like that, and really kind of bring out the worst of somebody to make it for an interesting freak show attraction. Um, and kind of learning about how he recruits people and stuff is also very interesting. So performance-wise, I thought this was a well-performed movie. Uh, this has an all-star cast, too. There's a lot of big cast member names in this. Um, huge, great performances from everybody all around. Uh, Guillermo del Toro seems to really know how to get the best performances out of his actors and actresses. The film also does strongly depict the highs and lows of carnival life, how when things go well, when the money's coming in, when people love the show that you're doing, uh, it can be really great and really big. Uh, everybody everywhere wants to interview, every newspaper wants to have a story about you, um, the money's flowing in, but also shows the lows about how when you're kind of this carny rat that's thrown into teaching about how to do the freak show attractions and stuff, you're kind of always this person that is always looking into the flaws of people and never really enjoying the the better aspects of life and how it's kind of a toxic way to view life and to pursue life. And um, there's a thing, something that happens near the end of the film that definitely shows the lowest of the low for carnival life um, that uh, does impact Bradley Cooper's life in some way that I can't spoil here. But um, it definitely shows the highs and lows of carnival life and how um, at the time, this is something that could really improve your life, but at the same time, if taken wrong, if taken incorrectly, if pursued incorrectly, it could take you into the po lowest possible low you can imagine, and you're not going to have a lot of friends and family as a result, as a result of this lowest of the low common denominator approach to these mistakes that you made and stuff. Um, I also thought the mentalism parts of the story were very interesting, how Bradley Cooper kind of perfects this craft how he perfects um making the most interesting show possible whether it was for the carnival or for himself in new york or los angeles or wherever he ended up going um i thought the mentalism portions of the film were very interesting as to how people pursue that and how they make a show out of it and things like that so all the scenes in this film regarding his mentalism abilities i thought were very strong here but for my negatives of nightmare alley and why i don't think it's as good as let's say a specific rim or Pan's Labyrinth or um, The Shape of Water, any of those kind of films. Um, there's just a lot of unnecessary subplots. Um, I would say Kate Blanchett's and um, Richard Jenkins has a role in this movie too. I would say their subplots in particular feel extremely drawn out. I feel like both of their subplots really could have just been condensed significantly. I really felt like I was watching a director's cut version of this movie. 
um, where it really just could have felt like a good solid 40, 45 minutes could have been trimmed out of the movie because it is running about two and a half hours as it is. So I think a good solid 40 minutes or so could have been trimmed from this movie. Um, I, I understood Kate Blanchett's character. She was trying to test, you know, Bradley Cooper's mentalism and kind of the wrongs of it and things. Uh, but I just thought everything regarding her character just could have been condensed significantly. I think everything they wanted to do with her character could have made its point in a much shorter fashion that doesn't feel so drawn out. Um, and same with Richard Jenkins, you know, have him have his character be helped for this thing that he wants Bradley Cooper for, but don't don't take the whole movie to resolve it or to explore it. Just just explore it for like 20, 25 minutes and move on. Um, if even that, and it's, it's just one of those things where, um, some of the better parts of this movie, like I said, are definitely in the first half. I really feel the second half of this film is just so drawn into these unnecessary subplots that take way too long to get explored. And I just really thought this film could have been condensed significantly in the editing room. I thought this is a good director's cut of this movie, but not a good theatrical cut for this movie. And like I said, this film is a good solid 45 minutes too long. Uh, and that actually leads to my next two negative points. It's a very drawn out movie. There's just a lot of scenes that seem to have a very long, they have a very long time of making its point. And there's just a lot of scenes where um, it, it's like one of those people that ramble on forever in a speech. And then they finally get to their point in like the last two minutes of the speech. It's like, well, you just could have just jumped right there to begin with. Um, and so there's just a lot of scenes where it's, it explores so much of nothing that by the time you get to what the film is really about, you just kind of wonder, couldn't they have gotten there much quicker than they did? Um, so there's just a lot of scenes where it kind of feels like that. It just feels very drawn out in its running time. And I would say a lot of the characters in this film are either very bad people or are unlikable people. And because there's so much like carny rats and people that commit murder and people that do bad things and people that are trying to expose the worst aspects of somebody throughout this movie. There's just a lot of characters that are just not the most easy characters to root for in this running time. Um, there's just a lot of unlikable characters where you just kind of sit down and wonder like, who was I supposed to be rooting for to begin with? Because each and every character in this film has something kind of terrible about them. And so as a result, it's kind of hard to get into the movie just because a lot of these characters that the film focuses on are not the greatest people to begin with. Um, and like I said, one other negative I have with this movie is what exactly compelled Guillermo del Toro to do this movie? Um, he's just so great at creature features and fantasy and science fiction that while I was watching Nightmare Alley, I was kind of hoping for something of those lines to show up in this movie. And I feel like he was just too into making a whole film noir film for himself that the things that make him great to begin with really aren't explored here very much just because he is trying to make something so different from what he's done before that it kind of defeats what he's outdoing in the sense that this they really could have taken on a creature feature or an original story of some kind, really just kind of explored. Like, if you really want to do something with this Nightmare Alley thing, maybe take the parts that are the best in that story and make it your own story. And I really think that if he went along the line of that for his follow-up film to Shape of Water... I think we all would have been happier as viewers because keep in mind this film did not do very well in the box office either so I wasn't the only one that was going to see the new Spider-Man film and this film was uh, playing in theaters too so there's just a lot of things about this film where you just kind of sit back and wonder what exactly compelled Guillermo del Toro to do this story in particular but I'm going to give Nightmare Alley a 7.5 out of 10. I think it's not a bad movie it's just not a movie that uh, it's a movie that I just still kind of scratch my head and wonder what exactly compelled Guillermo del Toro to do this story um, like I said, great things about it. Production design, great first half, great performances, depicts the highs and lows of carnival life. Uh, the mentalism stuff is very interesting, but there's just so many unnecessary subplots. It goes on for a little too long. Um, the characters themselves are just bad and unlikable people to begin with. And I just don't know what compelled Guillermo del Toro to do this story in particular. So 7.5. It's an okay like Redbox rental maybe some night if you really like Guillermo del Toro's work. It's not a film I could rush out to send you to go see right away in the theater if it's still playing somewhere though. I would I would easily say just, just spend a $1 rental on this one if you really want to see it. Um, there's things about it that are good. There's just not a lot of things about it that are great. 7.5 out of 10 for me. Nightmare Alley is an okay movie.